Hello, my name is Stephanie Smotis, and I'm a master's student under Dr. Joseph Ackman at the University of Guelph. And today I will be discussing the temporal dynamics of thrush rotter muscle larvae. Unionids have an important role in aquatic ecosystems, where they help to improve water quality through suspension feeding. However, there is an increase in conservation concern for unionids as muscle fauna is declining. And part of this may be due to their complex reproductive cycle, which involves a par parasitic larval stage on a vertebrate host. Unionids often live in multi species muscle beds, where host fishes may be shared among unionid species. And this leads to the research question Do unionid species partition their environment by the release of glycidia at different times? Given the high diversity of unionids at a site and the limited number of host fish, we hypothesize that unionids release their glycidia at different times to partition their hosts and to minimize potential competition. Glycidia sampling took place in the late summer in 2020 at the Florence site along the Sydenham River. A custom built glycidia sampler, as shown here, included a pump that pumped river water through each chamber for two hours, and then it would automatically rotate after two hours. This provided observations over a 24 hour period. Sampling took place over 10 days to obtain a total of 120 two hour samples. And in addition to the Glaucadia sampler, a total of 31 drift net samples were collected and the environmental and hydrodynamic factors, which are listed here, were recorded throughout each sampling day. Samples were preserved in the fields and they were taken back to the lab for processing. Each sample was carefully transferred onto a petri dish to view under a dissecting microscope. Each glottidium observed was photographed using Swift Imaging 3.0 and it was transferred into a separate storage vial containing preservative. Among the 120 samples from the Glaucidia sampler, a total of 5,242 Glaucidia were collected, with an average of 44 Glaucidia per two hour sample. There are at least six species by visual observation, and identification to the species level will take place using morphometric data of the height, hinge length, and length. Some species, like the pink heel splitter, are distinctive and identifiable by visual observation. Discriminant functions analysis based on a previous Sydenham River model will be used if necessary. The preliminary results are displayed in these two graphs. Figure 1 displays the raw number of glaucidia, this includes one or two valves, during each 24 hour sampling period with the highest number of glaucidia collected on day four. Please note that the data in both of these graphs have not been corrected for flow rate or the concentration of glaucidia, and all species are pooled. In figure two, the total number of glaucidia in each chamber during days three and four are displayed, with a higher number of glaucidia around midnight and dawn and dusk in both days. In the steps to come, glaucidia will be identified to the species level, the concentration of glaucidia using the flow rate through the sampler, that is right here from the outflow tube, will be determined, and the research question regarding the potential for unionists to partition their environment will be addressed. Based on the preliminary data, there is variation in glaucidia within and among days. And this is particularly at nocturnal and crepuscular periods. This brings forward the concept of union as partitioning their environment with the release of glaucidia at different times. And this research will ultimately be important for the recovery and conservation of union and species at risk. So a better understanding of their early life history can be used to mitigate potential threats that have led union to their SAR status. Lastly, I would like to extend a special thank you to everyone listed on this slide for the help and support through this ongoing research.